good evening and welcome to Dawn of Faith. Uh, we are having a very special uh, Vesper session uh, this evening. And uh, since it is uh, the Sabbath hours, I wanted to uh, bring uh, a very interesting discussion, a discussion concerning rest. Let me start by asking you this. Uh, if you are given a million dollars or a vacation uh, that would last for a year, which one would you choose? Uh, I'm sure most people would go for money, uh, but let me tell you something about money. Uh, when you go for money, it will be taxed. Uh, you will have uh, people who will come and uh, make themselves parasite over that money, and eventually the money will end. But memories are formed when people go for vacation. And personally, I'd choose to go for a vacation, especially to a very exotic place. Now, I want us to look at a vacation that happened in God's word. And uh, I'll take us back around uh, 4,000 years ago. And this is the story of the Israelites moving from Egypt going towards Canaan. Now, Israel had been in Egypt for 400 years. Uh, 30 years, 430 years actually, because 30 years was the time that they were having a good time. Then 400 years they were in slavery. And... Uh, at the end of uh, Genesis, going to Exodus, we are told that there was a king who came and this king, this pharaoh, uh, did not know of uh, Joseph and his uh, brothers and the miracles that had happened during Joseph's time. And now uh, he decides to uh, take these people who are now being considered foreigners, people who are considered uh, less than human compared to the Egyptians, and make them slaves so that they would work for them. So they are taken into slavery, and uh, during that period of slavery, given hard tasks. Uh, so you can imagine for 400 years, uh, people were doing extremely grievous tasks. But what happens afterwards? God calls up Moses, and God tells Moses that he should go and save his people. And God uh, is telling Moses that he wants these people to go and have a new experience this experience is going to be an experience uh, that is touching on rest. So Moses goes. Moses uh, goes into the courts of uh, the Pharaoh at that particular time. And Moses, uh, step by step, uh, keeps on showing the miraculous power of God. And each single time, Moses comes and gives the judgment of God. That is, let my people go into the wilderness that they may worship me. We are talking about the Sabbath. Don't forget that. Let my people go into the wilderness so that they may worship me. Remember, these people had been uh, slaves for 400 years. Uh, a slave is someone who does not have rights. A slave cannot go and unionize and ask for their rights. A slave is not a person who will say that they want to have a democratically elected leader who will go and stand for their people and who will remove the taxes that have been uh, placed upon them. A slave is someone who does not have any rights. A slave's work is to be seen and to do the tasks that have been given unto him. So eventually, after the 10th plague, where the firstborn sons of Egypt, together with the firstborns of all animals in Egypt, die, uh, the Pharaoh finally re uh, releases uh, the Israelites and they go into the wilderness. This is a vacation that lasts for one full year. A vacation where they come and know the Lord. This is a Sabbath for them, and this is where they come and learn how to worship God. It is in this same uh, vacation where God gives his ten commandments. And in these commandments, the fourth commandment tells uh, the Israelites that they should remember God, and they should remember his Sabbath. Because uh, six days in six days God made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of the, of the water. And on the seventh day, uh, it is a Sabbath of the Lord, uh, whereby God rested after he had done his creation. And when you go into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, it also speaks about the commandments again. And it now brings something interesting concerning uh, this particular commandment about the Sabbath. It is Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image of anything, any 
likeness of anything that is in heaven on earth or anything that is below the earth or anything that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God visiting the iniquities of the father unto the children unto the third and the fourth generation. Then jumping uh, down uh, to verse 11. Now we speaking about the Sabbath it says this which is very interesting concerning work and rest and the vacation that the Israelites were having. It says this verse 12. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord God hath commanded thee. Six days shalt thou labor to do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughters, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger which is within thy gates, that thy man servant and thy maid servant may rest as well as you. You see, it is interesting. God is saying that people should not work so that they may do what? They may rest. Or rather, if it was uh, in Hebrew, it would say they may Sabbath. Because Sabbath actually means rest. And it continues saying, And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath. God is commanding the Israelites to keep the Sabbath as a remembrance, as a commemoration of the work, the toil that they did in a godless place. And now that they have come to know God, now that they have come to worship God, they may now keep the Sabbath. Going back to what was happening before they left, God had mentioned that they may live. Uh, God had mentioned uh, to, uh, uh, to Moses to tell uh, Pharaoh that they need to go and uh, Pharaoh needs to release the uh, Israelites so that they may go and do what? Worship him in the wilderness. They may go and experience a Sabbath in the wilderness. This brings in a very pertinent question concerning what the Sabbath means. God is giving the Israelites rest and God through this commandment is also giving the Israelites rest and is saying that it is actually them, by them going to the wilderness, they are actually worshipping God. They are actually worshipping God, not only in the fact that they are resting, but in the fact that they are experiencing God in a new, in a, in a different way. Before the Ten Commandments were given, God had told the Israelites that they should go and collect manna that had been falling uh, around the camp, and they would collect it for six days, and on the fifth day, on the sixth day, uh, they would collect twice the portion because it was to be used also on the seventh day. If you are to collect the portion of manna, uh, double the portion of manna any other day, uh, by the following day, the manna that was excess would have uh, gone bad and it would have had worms, which is very interesting to have decomposed very quickly. But on this preparation day, they were to collect twice and miraculously it stayed longer to the point where on the seventh day, they had enough to eat. And on the seventh day, there was no manna that fell. This was an example of worship. God wanted uh, uh, the Israelites to understand that the Sabbath was given for man so that man may learn to stay at the feet of Jesus. So the question is, when was the Sabbath given? Because people always ask the question that, uh, we see in the Bible it was given during Israelites' time. Uh, it was given during the Mosaic laws. So does it apply to any other Christian? Exodus chapter uh, 20 verse 8 is very clear. And this is what it says. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And in it thou shalt do not any work. Nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger which is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all th that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. In this particular phrasing, we are told that you should rest because it is a remembrance of God's creative power. In Deuteronomy, we are told about God's redemptive power. Redemption from uh, being in a place where you are godless. Remember, Pharaoh is the one who, uh, when uh, Moses came to him, Pharaoh, t Pharaoh asked um, uh, Moses, who is God that I, that, that I may obey him? I do not know any God, uh, neither will I also obey him. But 
in this particular case, we are being told that uh, we should keep the commandment because it is a remembrance of creation. So let's just look at what happens in the creation story. And I think this is a story that all of us know. In the beginning, there was the word. Uh, and in Genesis, it says this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Then, of course, the first day comes and God makes light. The second day uh, comes, uh, God uh, makes the, se uh, the sky. He separates uh, the waters below from the waters above. And therefore, he makes the sky. The third day, God uh, says all the waters should uh, gather into one place and land should appear and uh, herbs that uh, bear uh, a seed and uh, trees that bear fruit. Uh, having seed according to its kind should also uh, come up on the third day. On the fourth day, God creates uh, the heavenly bodies, the sun, moon, and stars. And this is where it gets interesting. Listen to us. Uh, listen to uh, the fourth day, what happens in the fourth day. It says this. Uh, this is verse 14 of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let there, uh, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Right? And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Uh, so something interesting about this is that the lights that were created on the fourth day, they were to uh, separate day and night, just as it was in uh, the first day. So we already see a very stark distinction of how a day is. Then uh, the next thing that we're told is that uh, the these lights, these heavenly bodies shall be for signs and for seasons. Interestingly, when you go to... Um, uh, Matthew chapter 24, we're told that, uh, and you shall see signs in the stars and in the sun and in the moon uh, when Christ is being asked about what is going to happen when he comes back. And we're being told that, again, uh, it will also be for years and for days and also for months because, of course, how do you know a, 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 a month has passed? It is because uh, the moon has revolved around the earth for what the period of a month. But how do you go and measure a day? How do you go and measure a week for that matter? Uh, the week is measured in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. We are told that everything has been created. It says this, uh, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. Remember the definition of Sabbath. Sabbath has uh, three definitions. The first definition is to rest. The second definition is to end. The third definition is to cease. So cease, end. We see God having ceased his work, God having ended his work, God having gone into rest, God having gone into Sabbath. Uh, God ended his work, which he, uh, which he has made, and, on this, and, uh, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested from all his work, uh, which God created and had made. So the question is, uh, when God had uh, finished the work and he had rested, uh, what kinds of people were there? It was the mother and the father of all humankind. That was Adam and Eve. And in their loins were all generations that were to exist, all the people, all the nations, all the tongues, all the uh, people who would ever exist were within Adam and Eve. And they, uh, through resting with God, they also were partakers of the Sabbath. So, the question is, are we to keep the Sabbath at this particular time? Something interesting is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 9. It says this, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also ceased from his own works as God did from his. From his. When uh, Paul was writing the book of Hebrews, this is after uh, Christ has come. Christ has lived his whole life upon uh, the world and he has already ascended into heaven. And Paul is still mentioning that there still remains a promise of rest. There still remains a promise for the Sabbath, for those people who choose to go into the Sabbath. So the Sabbath not only is it a day, but it also is the, the practical activities, the, the ideas, the mindset that you have when you go into this particular rest. So Paul mentions that, yes, there is a rest, there is a Sabbath. And interestingly, he says that not everyone will go into this rest. The same way when Moses was told to go and raise the bronze snake so that anyone who was beaten by uh, the 
uh, snakes, the fiery serpents in the wilderness, when they would look upon this bronze snake, they would get healed, and some people chose not to look at it. There are also people who the rest has been given for free, but they will choose not to go into it. Listen to this. It says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into this rest. You know, it's interesting that, that Paul mentioned that we need to labor, we need to strive to get into this rest. Why is it? Because we understand the life that we are living right now. We are living in a place where there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of stimuli that affects us. We go all over the, all, all over the city. We go uh, along the road. We see billboards that have very flashy images. We see uh, social media always affecting us and having things that always strive us and try to agitate us. But we're being told that we need to labor to get into this rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So the Sabbath is entered upon by unbelief. And when you enter the uh, Sabbath, what happens? You are enjoined with Christ. Christ mentions in the book of the three uh, Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that um, the Sabbath was not... Uh, uh, m- the man, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So if you want Christ to be Lord over us, if you want to have an experience unlike any other with Christ, we need to strive to go into his Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is his and he makes us anew when we go into it. And indeed, as it is also written in the book of John, that uh, when we draw close unto him, he will draw close unto us. So let us strive to go into the Sabbath and may God bless us.